The Waka wicket has traditionally been known to be a fast surface. Pacers from around the globe have thrived, whereas the batsmen have trusted the bounce and carry to adjust themselves to it. Matthew Pace, the curator, is passionate about his job and endeavors to give the fans and the players the best possible wicket. It was a public holiday in Perth on Monday as Western Australia celebrated Labor Day. Out at the Waka, it was work as usual, as curator Matthew Page was up early to get the surface ready ahead of the two ICC Cricket World Cup 2015 games. With Australia playing Afghanistan on Wednesday and India slated to take on the West Indies on Friday. Page has a busy week in store. The centre wicket was open early in the morning with a covering of grass. The wickets around were well covered as Page interacted with journalists and delivered into the interesting nuances of making a wicket. Page is passionate about his job and is excited to get up each day to come to the waka. He shrugs off any suggestion of pressure in his job as he simply loves being there. When you ask him questions about the waka wicket, you can sense that passion in every answer. It is often said that the waka wicket is no longer as fast as it used to be, but Pace suggests that it is open to interpretation. He was only a little boy in the 1970s and early 80s when this wicket was known to be the fastest in the world. What makes it a fast wicket? The secret lies in the clay, as Pace explains. So I guess the main thing that makes this wicket, I guess, unique and 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 what it is, is is the clay makeup. Um, it has, it's got to do with the clay percentage. We have a very high clay clay content here. And then it's it's the type of clay it is, um, and the minerals that are in it that that I guess give it that that characteristic of, of pace and bounce that um, you see on the TV. Um, because we are very close to the pitch, it's very hard to understand there are different wickets. So you, you use this particular wicket for the India UAE match, yep. and the ma- the pitch will be uh, changed for the India West Indies match or uh, Australia match. We'll use the same wicket that we use for Australia, Afghanistan, for India, West Indies as well. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just re. So how um, many wickets do you have in this ground? We've got ten wickets out here that we that we use. At the World Cup will be played. The World Cup will be played on two wickets. Two wickets. Yep. So we use six for the first one, and then we'll use number four for the next next two games. At uh, uh, we have uh, you know, an impression. Maybe we are not right that uh, Waka used to be the fastest and furious wicket, but nowadays that is not the case. Uh, are you, do you, think do you agree with this or uh, do you have other ideas? Yeah, look, it's a, it's a really good question and, um, you know, a lot of people have got a lot of different ideas on it. Um, it's Some people go, look, we don't reckon it's as quick these days as it has been. Other people go, well, look, yeah, we, we still think it is as quick. Look, it's it's open to interpretation and it's all a perspective sort of thing, you know. I, I make wickets out here and I'll get guys come up to me and go, geez, that was really quick. And then I'll get other guys who go, look, we thought that was a bit slow. So, yeah, it's it's really hard to measure. Um, and as I say, it's, op- it's open for debate. You played uh, cricket uh, uh, on this pitch or anywhere? Um... No, I never never played first class cricket. Um, I played a little bit of second eleven county cricket in England, um, but mainly I just played grade cricket, grade, grade cricket in Australia. But it's very hard. We have uh, lots of stories here. Like, uh, uh, you have any idea that once uh, Dennis Lilly bowled a ball and it was you know short pitch, and after bouncing, it went outside the boundary. I heard the story. I heard was Jeff Thompson bowled a ball and it, it went over the bounced and then and went over the fence. Um, I haven't seen it, um, but yeah, I have heard about it. Okay. And how do you prepare the wicket? Uh, I mean, it is, is it something different from other wicket? Uh, like you have worked 15 years on the different grounds and pitches. Uh, you prepare something different with this wicket? Oh yeah, look, I guess you have to prepare wickets differently everywhere you go in the world. Um, you know, here's here the clay's different to to other you know to all other places. So yeah, you have to adjust your preparation, I, I, I guess, according to your conditions and um, you know what your clay and your grasses are, are like. What's your idea about dropping pitches, please? Dropping wickets? Mm. We don't have any any drop-ins here, so um, yeah, I've not had a hell of a lot to do with them, so I, I probably can't really comment too much on them. Glenn, obviously you have been associated with this town for almost 15 years now, so. Any particular match that you still um, that would like to share that which has been one of the most fascinating matches, means exciting matches over the years? Any particular matches that you would like to share? Good question, good question. <laughs> um, I, I, I'd probably say the one that probably sticks in my mind is probably the, 
one of the big bash when we won the big bash last year. Like it's been, uh, I think it's 10 or 12 years since we've we've won a major trophy here, and uh, yeah, to to win the big bash last year here was um, was very very special. And what is that one thing that makes life difficult for batsmen when they come out here because they find it very difficult to adjust to the pace and bounce of this wicket? So what is that one thing that the batsmen need to do and at the so as to adjust to the conditions here? Because they find life very difficult when they come to Becca. Um, because when uh, talking about the Indian team, they find it reasonably easier when playing in grounds like Sydney or Adelaide. But when they come to Becca, they really find it very difficult. So what is that one thing that batsmen need to adjust to so as to make life easier? Good question. I don't know. You'd have to ask a batting coach. Mm. <laughs> You'd have to ask a batting coach that. I guess it's. I guess it's because it's unique. The bounce is unique, and if you don't play on bouncy wickets all the time, then it, it takes a little bit to get get accustomed to. But um, yeah, I mean, how they how they deal with it and how they prepare for that, you you know, you'd have to ask the uh, the Indian cricket team that that question. And obviously, how has Dennis really uh, over the years because he's the president of Wacker, does he? Um, you have suggestions from the, the Dennis, or obviously he has been a legend here. Yeah, absolutely. Dennis Lilly is, you know, he's an absolute legend of uh, not only West Australian cricket but Australian cricket, and, and you know he's talked about all around the world. Um, yeah, look, I'm left to my devices out here. You know, obviously our, our reputation is that we have a, a fast, bouncy wicket, and every every wicket that we prepare out here, we we, we try and uh, prepare it so that it's it's got some pace and bounce in it for the quickies. Is a gentleman out there, an old ground staff? Jack has been here 38 years. Ooh. So, uh, would he be able to... Uh, was he there when Tendulkar played that innings over here in 91? He would have been here, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So, would it be, uh, would it be possible for him to speak to us if he was there that day? Jack's, Jack's very, very quiet. And, yeah, <laughs> he's a very, very busy man this morning. So, uh, yeah, he'll, he'll be unable to to uh, sit down and, and have a chat. Perhaps the difference in pace is because of a change in the nature of clay. It was also dug up about eight years ago. And then uh, left and went travelling around the world doing some wickets and playing cricket. And I've been back here now six, this is my sixth summer. So um, we'll go for a minute, we'll walk out in the middle and uh, I'll give you a talk through, I guess, basic preparations. And um, if you've got any questions you want to ask, far away. The clay comes from a place called Varuna, which is about a 90-minute drive south of Perth. Some curators may be tempted to import clay from this town, but Pace says that there are many other factors such as weather that also play a part in the preparation of the pitch. Page also says that you can get about 20 years from a particular wicket if you dig it out completely. The white square at the Waka has as many as 10 wickets and each has their unique characteristics, although the overall nature remains the same. 